I'd imagine with most reviews you can find a split, 50-50 negative positives, but wouldn't have been too many negatives for that review? No, there weren't too many. Um, you can always find something when you look at it forensically. Uh, we just actually had a look at a, um, a few things and the way we use the ball and some options during that second quarter and what we can uh, t continue to tinker with, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty convincing outing for us. The theme of this week has it been, I mean, complacency is probably a, a, an overused word, but is it uh, about sort of making sure that you look back to reality a little bit in some... Yeah, I mean, we're in a position where, where each week we need to re-establish ourselves and you, know, you wipe the slate clean and the lads, because they've played together a little bit more in recent times and in, in the lines, we've had a little bit of stability. Our injury toll hasn't been um, too drastic and that's helped us develop some cohesion. But each week, because we haven't played a, um, a big sample of games together, uh, we we feel like we need to re-establish ourselves all over again to, um, to continue, continue to foster that belief and um, and so it hasn't been difficult to, to refocus, um, which is great. Um, you'd love to be that team that's just absolutely convinced each week going in that you um, that your output and, and your performance is going to be at that high end. Um, and we're not quite there yet. I guess the reality is that you still need to keep winning to... Oh, uh, exactly. To yeah, I mean, we, we can't afford to slip up and and th that's something that's driving us, there's no doubt. I mean, the boys are talking about that more behind the scenes than uh, directly with me and, and I think that's a good thing and I just need to manage that and uh, and massage our temperaments and, uh, and go into this game finding a spike again. Bebo, how do you get a read on the Giants? I mean, they smashed the pies, they lost it one by under a goal, they won by one under a goal and then, you know, just like almost didn't show up against the, the Hawks. What are, you, what are you sort of preparing for? Yeah, I mean, you talk about coaching teams. Um, Leon coaches a team, but he's coached a lot of different teams this year because they've had significant injuries at different times and there's some uncertainty this week with their personnel. So they'll have a different team again. So uh, that uncertainty... I mentioned it last week, is not always a good thing for the opposition team in planning because you, there's no foothold on what they're going to look like and, and what they're actually doing. So um, there's, a, there's an element of, um, um, you know, sort of insecurity from our point of view because we don't, we don't know exactly what we're going to get. But what I do know is uh, they've had a game or two when they haven't, um, performed as well as they would have liked and I think the, the prime example is when Hawthorne beat them the first time and then they came out and, um, and put a significant margin on Carlton the next week and, and you could probably see the difference in performances from week to week. Uh, so we're expecting uh, that spike from them. Uh, I'm sure that they wouldn't have been uh, over the moon with their performance last week in the snow and, uh, and so we'll, we know what's coming. Is it mentally and physically exhausting and draining for you and also for the players to, you know, obviously every week is about thinking that week, but particularly for these final two weeks? Uh, not, not really. I mean, the challenge is to get your mind right. You know, if we're talking about the mentality or the psychology of it is to get your mind right and focus on the things that matter. And when you've got um, great people around the players supporting them and helping them do that, um, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I think the, the challenge with, with any team, any club in a 22 round season um, and the potential of going on is to try and uh, remain fresh, to uh, create new beginnings and uh, ensure that the players come in and, and look forward to playing games and, and that's the state we're in and that's a great sign with you know, with two rounds of the season proper to go, that our players are, are feeling energised and, and they're looking forward to playing with each other. So uh, it can be a mental grind, but um, we've been able to, re you know, establish a good form line that, that's excited um, not only us internally, but also our fans who, uh, who are coming to the games and watching us on telly. Did that mean you, like, a bit, put a bit of a spring in step? Did pressure players up by winning by so much? Well, it's un obviously unusual to, to do that. We've had some uh, some promising victories over the over the year, but definitely in the second half of the year, where 
um, you know, we're looking for sust sustainability. You know, we, we want to be able to pull this off week to week. I mean, 100 point wins you're not going to be able to do every week, but um, but we feel like our, our method and the way we're playing together, although we'll, we'll be challenged again this week, um, as long as we're ready for it, um, you know, we, we, we feel like it'll stack up. So it could be like a springboard into the back end of the season, I guess? Springboard into, into the finals, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, obviously I don't... Everyone's tested me, uh, we probably not so much last year, but um, the course of uh, my coaching journey and uh, yeah I, I just see that the season is um, as a week-to-week -week proposition and then um, it's all about just creating an opportunity and that's what we're trying to do and uh, we need to win both games to create that opportunity and then and then we can talk about that that other aspect if we get there but uh, we've got a way to go. Are you able to give us an update on um, Dale Morris and your discussions with him since last yeah, well, I just spoke to him again before, but it's it's uh, the status quo really from our point of view. And Dale's still um, he's he's processing what his options are, and I, I imagine over the course of um, the next week or two, we'll be able to give you something in the public domain. Speaking of legends of the club, um, Riley signs on, joins a couple other youngsters, father son. Uh, is that your fifth on the? Is your fifth father son on the list? So uh, that must be yeah, that's he's our fifth. Yeah, you got Mitch, Libba, Lockie, Zane, Riley. Is that it? Yep. yep. Yeah. So he's shown some pretty good form this year. Is that sort of what sealed the deal for him as far as moving forward? Uh, he, yeah, he, he's a very promising player, Riley, and it's a shame he, we haven't been able to keep him in the team. And that conversation has been a difficult one from my point of view. He did enough in his first game to warrant um, a second game and to stay in the stay in the side. We were really pleased with uh, his first outing, and then you know, the last two um, or last week we carried him over the week before. But the last week, you know, he had a, an out probably his best VFL game where he had a high possession game, kicked four goals. So. Uh, you know, that's, that's um, exciting for us that uh, we've got Riley um, waiting there for, for more opportunity. So, uh, yeah, he, he, hopefully he's going to be a, uh, have a long career at our footy club. 14 re-signings this year, it's a, it's a pretty good effort. Yeah, it is, and, and Sam, Sam Power, our, our list man, has done a tremendous job. It's a, obviously a monumental task when you've got that many players and, and all we can do is... Um, maintain and, and promote a, a healthy um, work environment and and, uh, and an environment where players feel like they can progress and and then turn ourselves into another formidable team and a team that the players want to belong to and we're getting there and so the signs are good with all those lads signing up and um, we'll have more challenges again next year and um, and there's still a couple to go. Uh, the two Baileys, uh, Bailey Williams and Bailey Dale, are, um, we're still in discussion, so hopefully we get there at, at some point. Are you any clearer with Libba's knee? We've got it down as a, still another couple of weeks, and uh, and it, it'll be, um, yeah, I mean, it'll it'll be that, I think, and then we'll, we'll work out whether or not we make it or not. What we do there, we'll, we'll give you an update. What do you yeah. make of, have you been up to Giant Stadium many times before as far as the size of the ground, hostile environment? playing there, like what do you make of it? Oh, well, I mean, I think their supporter base is growing. It's been a while since we, we've played them. I mean, we played them at the start of last year. So it's you know, almost 40 rounds have gone um, since we uh, since we played them. So we're not um, overly familiar with it at the moment. I think it's called Giant Stadium now, isn't it? Um, it was spotless last time we played it. So, um, you know, and the, the distant memory um, of 16 is, is is long gone, and most of the guys going up there, we're gonna, we'll arrive at the hotel, we'll have our captains run here, we'll arrive at the hotel, and we'll walk over and, and have a look. Um, because there's a, a lot of players in our team who've never played there, so it's a it's a bit of the unknown for some of us. When are you heading up there? We'll head up um, Saturday about midday.